Underdogs are usually called underdogs for a reason. I mean, this is what I thought would happen, but I hoped it would be more competitive. But every once in a while, even the most hardcore MMA fan can be surprised. He just shook up the world. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. This is a list of fights where a fighter wasn't given much of a chance to win and ended up shocking the world. These are some of the best underdog wins in MMA. In 2004, Pride held a heavyweight tournament featuring some of MMA's top fighters. Among the favorites to win were Fedor Emelianenko, Antonio Nogueira, and Mirko Krokop. Krokop was one of the most feared fighters in the heavyweight division at the time, with nine wins, finishing eight of them, and only one loss. Yeah, but oh! There it is! The trademark oh! left oh! kick, and it's over! Krokop's opponent, Kevin the Monster Randleman, on the other hand, had seven losses prior and wasn't given much of a chance to win. Coming from a wrestling background, Randleman's game plan was to take Krokop down as soon as possible. Very Excellent. smart. This was a very smart move from Kevin. He's got to take him down, though. After an unsuccessful clinch and takedown attempt, things didn't look so good for the monster. It was this moment that everyone expected Mirko Krokop to destroy Kevin Randleman. Randleman with the shot back up to his feet. Oh! Excellent, excellent, excellent. It's over, it's over, it's over. Oh! It's over. Oh! Unbelievable. Kevin Randleman has knocked down Mirko Krokop! Mirko was knocked out 1 minute and 57 seconds into the first round. Randleman was eliminated from the tournament after losing his next fight to Fedor Emelianenko, but not before delivering one of the best slams in MMA history. Can Randleman take Kevin Randleman died this year after a heart attack. He was 45 years old. For all the fans, Japanese, Croatian, Russian, American, I just want to say God bless all of you and the whole world needs more peace and more love. While not as well known as some of the other fights on this list, Muhammad King Mo Lawal and Emmanuel Newton fought at Bellator 90. King Mo was a big favorite to win, with odds closing near minus 1,000, where betting $1,000 would only net you a $100 profit. Lawal made his MMA debut in 2008 against a veteran of over 60 MMA fights, Travis View. King Mo finished view in the first round via TKO. Lawal also has wins against notable fighters Mark Kerr, Hodger Gracie, and even Gegard Mousasi. Newton wasn't as well known at the time, with seven losses prior, being mostly known for his unorthodox style, employing a variety of spinning techniques. Spin The fight looked fairly even, with both fighters landing good shots. As pointed out by commentator Jimmy Smith, Lawal had a tendency to drop his hands after throwing punches. Look well, at that reset. He throws a few times and drops his hands and resets. Mo lets his guard down after he throws, just like that. Mo likes to drop his hands like that. Can Newton take advantage of it? The simple mistake turned out to have a significant impact on the fight. Mo's taking those shots well. He has landed that overhand right a couple times. Oh my God! He's done! He's done! Newton won via KO in the first round, stunning everyone in attendance. You talk about shocking the world! That's what he just did! Lawal and Newton fought once again at Bellator 106, with Newton winning again, this time by decision. Fedor Emelianenko used to be considered the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, remaining virtually unbeaten in over 30 professional fights. It looks like he is out! It looks like he is out! But the streak came to an abrupt end at Strikeforce in 2010. His opponent, Fabricio Verdun, was released from the UFC after being knocked out by Junior Dos Santos. The odds were swayed heavily in Emelianenko's favor, with Verdun coming in as a 6-1 underdog. Fedor quickly dropped Verdun and seemed to be on his way to winning the fight until Verdun, a grappling world champion, caught him in a triangle choke. After 33 fights without being defeated, the legendary fighter, the mystical figure, the embodiment of what a true MMA fighter should be, tapped out in the first round with his head stuck in some guy's smelly crotch. Oh, he's tapping! He's tapping! Fedor! Losing for the first time! Unbelievable! Fedor went on to lose the next two fights as well, but has since rebounded, winning his last four fights in a row.
Matt Serra was a nearly 10 to 1 underdog when he fought George St. Pierre at UFC 69. I do believe that the heavy favorite, if I had to bet my life on it, I'd have to bet on George St. Pierre. He's been more successful, he's been more impressive. Serra didn't exactly work his way through the ranks and only received a title shot for competing on the UFC's reality show, The Ultimate Fighter. After defeating Pete Spratt, Shoney Carter, and a controversial decision win over Chris Lytle, he was given a shot at the welterweight title. You win the $100,000. You win the $100,000 uh, sponsorship from uh, Science. You win the 2007 Zion TC car. You win the limited edition jersey, two carat diamond watch. And more importantly, let me get this straight, you win uh, the title shot against the winner of George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes. It was supposed to be GSP's first title defense since winning the championship against Matt Hughes at UFC 65, but Matt Serra had other plans. Fights. That's it. Sarah's doing it better. Oh, yeah. Sarah's doing it better. After hurting GSP, Serra didn't let up until the fight was stopped. Sarah and GSP fought again a year later, with GSP dominating Sarah and reclaiming the welterweight title. And a few honorable mentions. Nick Diaz surprised everybody at Pride 33 by not only beating Takanori Gomi, but winning via Gogo Plata while completely stoned. He tested positive for the Gomi fight, and they said there was so much weed in his system when they tested him that he had to be high when he was fighting. Mike Russo pulled off an unexpected upset after knocking out Todd Duffy, then followed up with one of the most brutal hammer fists ever seen in MMA. Holly Holm shocked the world by knocking out Ronda Rousey. Due to copyright constraints, we can't show the footage. But here's a digitally rendered representation of the fight. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs>